Hey, what's good, my web development friends? Today, I want to address a question that I definitely had before I started working as a WordPress developer. And that question is, as a WordPress developer, especially a freelance developer, how do you know when to use a WordPress page builder or should you never use them? Um, and that's something that I, I thought a lot about, I wasn't sure about. So if this is a question that you've asked yourself, stay tuned. What I want to do first is address some common misconceptions about page builders. I'll talk about some of the pros uh, to using page builders, and then I'll also talk about some situations where you might not want to use a WordPress page builder. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. Let's get into it. The first misconception that I want to talk about is that people seem to think that with WordPress page builders, just anyone can build a great website. And while it's true that these page builders make building websites much more accessible to, to more people, um, you'll, you might hear things like, oh, well, my next door neighbor's teenage son can build my website for me. Why should I pay a professional developer? And sure, for those people, they can go right ahead and pay the teenager next door to build their website. But I promise you that there will be some very problematic issues, problematic issues. There will be some problems with that website. I was just looking at a website today. I was actually working on it. The website was beautiful, but it had gotten hacked, surprise, surprise. And the images were enormous file sizes. Some of the images on this website were over a megabyte. They were huge PNGs. and most of the pages had a gallery. So that means that someone on a mobile device was literally downloading 10 megabytes of images, not to mention all the other things and bloat that comes with the page builder. So the website was extremely slow. And do you think that this website had the correct HTML tags like 1H1 and H2, H3, semantic HTML? No, probably not. The other problem is that none of the images had alt tags, alternative text, which is important for accessibility and for SEO because Google notices things like this. So while anyone can build a website, a nice looking website, there will probably be some issues. The other thing that that teenager is likely to do is on top of using a WordPress page builder, since they aren't familiar with the code behind WordPress, uh, they probably can't write a ton of CSS, they're probably going to use a lot, and I mean a lot of extra plugins that a WordPress developer would not necessarily need, so that site is going to be extremely bloated. Now that that's out of the way, I need to pose a question to you. Can a website built with a page builder be a successful website? Now, success, a successful website, you know, that might mean different things to different people. But for me, that answer is a resounding yes. There are literally thousands of very successful websites that were built with page builders. They accomplish the goal of the owner. That might be to sell lots of products on their e-store or get lots of visitors every month and improve their personal brand. Or maybe it's a membership site with literally thousands of members. I've personally worked on sites built with page builders that got thousands of views every month and sold a lot of products through their e-store and brought the owner passive income. To me, that is a successful website. So as a developer, start thinking about these page builders as tools and not some kind of second class website. There can be very successful websites built with page builders and people do it every single day. The point I'm trying to make here is that WordPress page builders are tools. Divi is a tool, Elementor is a tool, Beaver Builder is a tool. They're all tools and as a developer you need to think of them that way. A good developer uses the best tools available to them after looking at the pros and the cons. So if you're a developer, think of page builders the same way you think of jQuery or Bootstrap or Vue or React, you have to weigh those pros and cons and make the best decision available to you. 
So while there's no checklist to know exactly when you should use a page builder, weigh the pros, weigh the cons, and a developer who knows what they're doing can build a site with a page builder that's fast, that gets good search rankings, and very much accomplishes the goal of the client. The first reason that probably comes to mind for using a page builder is for the speed of development. And with page builders, especially if you're familiar with the page builder, you can build websites really fast. Divi happens to be my favorite WordPress page builder, even though it's not the only good one. Uh, but I wanted to show you these layout packs. There are 179 of them that come with the theme, and you can buy others from the Divi Marketplace or other outside vendors. There are a lot of templates, and I just want to show you some of these. Like, let's look at Flower Shop. Say you're building a project for a local client. Well, you can, what I like about these page builders with Divi and Elementor, I know you can even take certain sections from one template and take a section from another template. You can mix and match. Obviously you want the design to be cohesive, uh, but you can really use these to kind of jumpstart your development. And so you can customize an entire template or use them for ideas. And all, all, I think all page builders have very nice looking templates. Um, this one is nice. You see it has some nice animations right off the bat. So depending on your project, you could use a template and save tons, I mean tons of hours. And if we inspect this and look at it on a mobile device, it's already responsive. You don't even have to worry about that. This is on a very small mobile device and you can see that it already looks good. So with a page builder, almost instantly, whether you use a template or not, you're going to get a responsive site. There may be some tweaking that you need to do, but you can use these templates to save you a ton of time. And even if you're starting from scratch, especially if you already have the design and all of the content, you can crank out those sites really fast once you're familiar with whatever page builder that you're using. So if you have a project with a quick turnaround, a page builder is a great option because you can build a site that's responsive, it's easy to test for issues, and you can really get that site up and running very quickly and charge the client more if there's a tight deadline. It only makes sense. The other thing is sometimes clients come to you and they don't have a huge budget. If a client comes to me with, I don't know, $500, $1,000, you name it, but for you, it's a small budget and you're not, you're not sure if you're going to take it. But if you have the time, you might be able to provide that client with a nice looking responsive website that gets the job done and you can still make good money on it because to code a custom theme from scratch or to customize um, uh, maybe let, let's call it a traditional WordPress theme, that's going to take you a lot longer. And sure, there are benefits to that, but if you've got a quick turnaround or the client doesn't have much of a budget, this might be a way that everyone can win. Another good reason for a page builder is for when you need a lot of flexibility. As a solo freelancer, you might get some clients who approach you and they really don't have a design. Maybe the client has some colors, maybe they don't, uh, but many clients don't know exactly what they're looking for. And because page builders provide so much flexibility, you can download and quickly customize a template or you can build a quick prototype to show the client. And that way they can give you some feedback. They can tell you what they like, what they don't like, and you're not out of a ton of time. You haven't just wasted weeks and weeks to get them this page that maybe they hate and you're going to have to start all over. So I like to use page builders in that situation because it's great. If the client doesn't like something, no big deal. Hopefully you factored that into your estimate, but this is really a huge benefit in my mind. And because you're so easily able to copy templates, import templates, make quick changes, I feel like I'm not out of, I haven't just lost a ton of time and wasted a ton of effort building this page that the client didn't like because that happens sometimes. 
And to piggyback off of that thought, there are a lot of clients out there that really just want the initial site to be built and set up for them. And maybe they're a small business or something, but they plan to maintain the site and make any changes in the future. And the nice thing about page builders, at least the ones that I'm a big fan of, like uh, Divi, Elementor, Beaver Builder is a good one. There are some that I'm not so much of a fan of, Very but handy. the nice thing about page builders is that almost any computer savvy person can log in and they can figure out how to change an image. They can change the copy themselves. They can figure things out. Not everything will be so obvious to them, but if this is a site that you are setting up and then you're going to hand off to them, then a page builder might be a great option because it will be very easy for you to teach them how to use it. And if they need to, the documentation for page builders is good. There are tons of YouTube videos out there. And if this truly was a project where you built the website, handed it off to the client, and they ended up updating it, maybe you've parted ways. If it's built with a page builder, that client is not going to have any trouble finding another freelancer familiar with a popular WordPress page builder. It's so there's some standardization there and really I think that should be a benefit to the clients because if they ever need something fixed or updated that they can't figure out and you're no longer around, it's not going to be the end of the world and they'll be able to easily find another developer. Before I wrap things up, I need to talk about when not to use a WordPress page builder because WordPress page builders are definitely not always the main tool to use or the best tool to use for a job. and I. I definitely don't use them for all of my projects uh, and I wouldn't recommend that you do either. The main reason not to is speed. Uh, page builders, because they are so flexible, they pull in a lot of scripts and style sheets and sometimes they require a lot of external plugins to be added on and there can be some bloat there. Now, like I said before, sites built with page builders like Divi and Elementor can be fast. For sure, if they're kept lightweight, maybe there are often uh, features that can be turned off on these page builders, and they're not always going to be slow, especially on good hosting. But if your client has budget GoDaddy hosting, that page builder, that site built with a page builder is probably going to be slow. It's not going to get the best speed scores. Now this may or may not be a problem, but if the client has a budget, and they need a fast site because SEO rankings are very important um, or you know if they have the budget it might not be the best idea to use a page builder. Gutenberg is pretty good these days you can do a lot of layout stuff just with Gutenberg you can code a child theme for the page layouts you need ACF uh, advanced custom fields allows a lot of flexibility as well so if it's really important that this site gets good speed scores, a page builder might not be the best option, especially if the client has the best has a good budget for it. And on top of that, there are many clients out there that really don't actually want to maintain their website themselves. Even if the website is very easy to navigate and update, they are going to send you the edits and the updates and the changes. They want you to do it no matter how easy it is. A lot of clients just don't, they just don't want to do things themselves and they're happy to pay a developer for it. So if this is going to be a client where you have kind of a long-term relationship and you know that you're going to be doing the edits, you might as well build something without a page builder because again, it's going to get better speed scores and that is important ultimately for SEO, especially if this site is not on the best hosting. But I do want to say that if this is a site where you're getting a lot of changes and, and doing maintenance for that client means really spending a lot of time to make those edits and additions, then a page builder could also be uh, a good option because you're easily able to change layouts and pages and it will be much faster for you to make those edits in the future. I would say though, try to get your website on good hosting because that will make a huge difference. I'll never understand it why clients will pay $30 or $50 an hour to a developer to make their site faster when the number one thing they could do is pay $10 a month instead of $2 a month for hosting. Lastly, I would not use a page builder for a project that has a lot of unique animations. Doing some animations is very easy, 
But for something like this, a page builder is just not the best option. And actually, just yesterday I was building this animation for an Elementor site, and even that was quite a struggle. So to wrap things up, there is no checklist that you can look at to decide if you need to use a page builder, but there are lots of WordPress agencies out there that exclusively use certain page builders. If you look on Upwork, there are lots of long-term contracts with agencies building PSD to Divi or PSD to Elementor, design to page builder, essentially. There's a lot of work out there, and this might be a good place for someone who's just sort of getting into freelancing to start out. If you're not the most experienced web developer, you can still build very nice sites with these page builders, and there's a lot of work out there for you. So the points that I'm trying to make here are that WordPress page builders are not always the best tool for every project, but sometimes they are a great tool to use for a project. So you're not less of a developer if you use a page builder. In fact, it might be very smart of you to use one in many different situations and cases. And I've had clients who were extremely happy with their sites that I built with Divi and Elementor. So if you're still here, thanks so much for watching. Again, my name is Taylor. This is Coding for Tacos. If you have comments or questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you. And I hope to see you here for the next video. Cheers.